With the Greytech Power Pack for Advanced Steel, we have the Structure Designer. And the Structure Designer is designed to save you considerable time and money. It incorporates an extensive range of building definitions and tools, enabling you to configure a complete structure in minutes using just one dialog box. Um, so within this video, we're going to have a look at some of the basic functions of the Structure Designer. Uh, as you can see here, we have um, got our structure. Um, now, one of the things that we can do, we have a library entry. So, just going to run through a few of the different types of structures that we can create. So, if we click on the curved roof and then load that entry from the library, you can see that we have a structure with a curved roof and some cold rolls, some door openings, some window openings. We'll look at uh, multi-storey one bay to begin with. So that's our multi-storey structure with bracing as well. You can see in there the macro is putting in bracing. I'm going to go through a few of these tabs um, shortly. I'm just going to load in uh, a few different uh, types of building. So here we have a multi-storey with two bays in there. Uh, we'll look at a um, single story multiple bay. You can see as well the macro will do the cladding for you as well. Here's our multi story single bay. Uh, for those of you who are using tapered beams, we can actually create structures using tapered beams. So if we have a look here, these are tapered beam type structures. And then the final one that we'll, we'll have a look at from the library is a mezzanine type structure. So there we have two bay mezzanine within the first bay, this area here. We've got two levels within the second bay, which is this area here. We just got one level. So if we go back to our default structure, so those are just some um, library entries to show you what you can do. Now, if you are modeling repeated buildings, say you're doing agricultural buildings um, and the size and the number of bays change, you can set up your own library entries to, um, to start with. And then what we can do in the dialogue, we can look at the profiles that are used within the dialogue. We can then look at the building definition. So for example, let's just say we want 10 bays. Simply type in the dialogue and the system will add in the 10 bays. Might be a bit big for what we're doing today. We'll make that six, make it a bit more manageable. Then we can look at the uh, distances between them, between these Sorry, the number of rows. I called it bays. It's the number of rows. Then we can look at the distance between the rows. So at the moment, they're all at five meters. If we wanted to, we can untick the box and we could say, right, well, in the middle here, this one is six and a half meters. And do we want to create transversal beams, beams that are spanning between the columns? We can say yes or no. And we'll just give you a real quick overview um, within a few minutes of what can be done in here. So within our portal frames, we can set the column heights, we can set the different section sizes, we can choose the column sizes, and what we can actually do in here, if I set the column on the left-hand side, let's say I want to make it slightly bigger, that will change in frame one, that will change this column here. What I can then do is I can say, I want to copy that to all, that will copy it to the right hand um, column and we'll we'll just change the rafter size and we'll change the rafter positioning to top so the system line is at the top of the rafter now that's done it for frame one what I can then do is I can say copy to all that will then copy that to all frames so we do have the option to have everything the same or we can have different frames if we want gable posts, 
again, we've got the system knows that there are six different portals in our macro. So we can go to portal number one, just so we can see it on the end here. Do we want a center post gable? So I can then enable that option and that will put in the center post for me. This macro is all about enabling and disabling things that you want. Do we want total number of gable posts? So we can say yes, we want four gable posts. And then you can see on the picture here, we've got these values in here, which correspond to the values running down um, here. I could then obviously go to a different portal. The purlins in the roof are set up on the left hand side and the right hand side on this library entry. If we wanted side rails, again, we're looking at the left hand side of the building between portals one and two. I can enable the side rails. I can then copy them to all the other portals that I want. And then I can copy from the left hand side to the right hand side if I want. Uh, I think what we'll do is we will go to one, two, 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 three, three to four, and I will disable them in this one in here. And because I've copied that to both sides, that's going to disable them in there. Because what I'll do in here, we'll go to this portal, we'll look at enabling some side bracing. So we can control what type of bracing it is. Then we can go into the geometry and we can say, well, I need two fields of bracing in there. We can put some V bracing in instead if we wanted to. We can do the same within the roof. Then platforms, we can look to add in, so we have a mezzanine in here, portals one to two, again, just so we can see it. We can actually put in a platform in here. And then we can look at bringing in secondary beams if we want to, so we can enable secondary beams. We'll enable them in the x-axis and we'll say, I want five trimmer beams in there. Do we have any openings? So what we'll do, left hand side, portals three to four, we will create a door frame, for example. That will put that in there. Then we can, can choose whether the posts are continuous, uh, what happens with the section sizes, what's happening to the system line positioning, uh, or we could disable that as well. If we need any extra beams in there, we can add them with the intermediate beams. So we might need an extra beam spanning in here. And then the final part of the macro is our cladding. So on the roof, again, you choose on the left-hand side, are we enabling cladding? We then choose what cladding profile we want. If we're extending it anywhere, are we adding any roof openings in? So we could enable one in area three, which is this area in here. And then with the dialogues, you can see that we can actually add in um, any openings that we need. If I go back just to our openings tab, the final thing I'll show you, if I, let's say we do a gate frame. And we'll extend those to the columns. We'll make the height a bit bigger. And we'll make the... Now what we'll... If we go to add claddings to the left-hand side, the system knows that we have an opening because we have created an opening. So the system won't put cladding there because we've defined it as an opening. So that is a real uh, whistle-stop introduction to what you can do with the Greytech Powerpack for Advanced Steel Structure Designer. Greytech.